What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another Madden 24 online game. Oh boy, oh boy. The Dallas Cowboys have blown it. How about those Cowboys? More like how about those Green Bay Packers? They went into Jerry World and dismantled the Dallas Cowboys. They made it look easy. Jordan Love looks like Prime Aaron Rodgers and Prime Brett Favre combined out there. Insane. Insane. I Look, I've been talking about it the past week. I was expecting Jordan Love to play well. I was expecting La Matt LaFour to call a good game. I No one could have seen this coming. Not even the biggest Green Bay Packer fan on the planet. Now, I'm not surprised that the Packers had a good offensive game, but... I mean, the Dallas Cowboys' ineptitude on their side of the ball on offense is what I'm really shocked by. Dak Prescott was a legitimate MVP candidate this year. Now, Lamar should win it, but, I mean, Dak was putting up crazy numbers. And, you know, I think the one thing about Dak is he always plays good with the lead. When he plays from behind, it's a whole different story. And we saw a little bit of that today. And also, playoff Dak Prescott. Yeah, it's the regular season, but what about the playoffs? That's the other thing, right? And I, it, there might be some truth to that where Dak is just not really a big game player right now because, I don't know, just the confidence that we saw from Dak Prescott in the regular season, it wasn't there in the playoffs compared to Jordan Love who has complete control of that Packers offense, complete understanding of what reads to make and what situations. He just looks so under control. Meanwhile, Dak, that offensive line is playing tremendous. He's got a lot of time and just can't find anyone open. And while we do have to give the Green Bay Packers defense their fair share of credit, it's just when you have that much time in the pocket in the NFL, there's no way that something should not be open. So whether it's, you know, some, maybe some Dak's not trusting his eyes or whatever it may be, it was just an absolute train wreck out there. And the other thing that's surprising is the Cowboys, it's been a theme for a little bit of a while where they haven't really been able to establish the running game. With a good offensive line, you would think Tony Pollard would really be able to eat in games like this, but uh, Tony Pollard just never got going. Part of it was, you know, a bit of a pass-heavy approach early on in the game, but, I mean, they started the game off a of heavy personnel for whatever reason, trying to pound the rock with Tony Pollard, and uh, that wasn't really working out too well. This Green Bay front is pretty solid. They have solid players up front in that front seven you know from the linebackers to Kenny Clark inside and stuff like that but I mean still you know like the way Zeke used to run the ball years ago for Dallas you know Tony Pollard looked like he would take over that role that's why they moved on from Ezekiel Elliott and uh, you know Pollard just hasn't really looked like that guy too much but I mean a big part of it is the passing attack Dak threw the back breaking pick six to Darnell Savage uh, you know you, have, you might have a chance to win the game no matter what but when you throw that pick six I mean, you literally got to be Super Bowl Tom Brady making the 28-3 comeback if you're going to come back in a game of this magnitude. And, uh, yeah, the Cowboys just didn't really have it. As I'm doing this recording right now, the game is actually still going on. There's, like, five minutes left. Dallas just scored a touchdown to cut the lead to, like, 24 or something like that. I'm sure they'll go for an onside kick afterwards. But, I mean, man, the, the Packers, even if the Cowboys were putting up points, the the Packers were putting up points literally every single time they had the ball. They got stopped once on like their second drive of the game, and that's really been it. They've been able to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Aaron Jones running the ball made him look easy. Aaron Jones, the Cowboy killer, he's done it again, especially in Arlington. I mean... He's been spectacular. What else can you say about Aaron Jones? But it was also just easy, right? Aaron Jones was getting a lot of yards before even being contacted. And, you know, that might be a scheme thing. I'm not sure what it was. And then it seemed like Matt LaFour was always pushing the right buttons on when to call the play-action game. As, uh, let's see, the Packers got that on-site recovery. I'm, I'm looking live at the game right now. But, yeah, you know, Matt LaFour was calling a great game. We have to give Matt LaFour a lot of credit. And uh, hopefully now Matt LaFour gets his rightful credit for not just, you know, the play calling that he's done today, but the play calling that he's done all season long. Because, you know, I feel like this was a big prove-it season for Matt LaFour, right? You don't have Aaron Rodgers. And people want to see, were you an Aaron Rodgers merchant or what's the deal? And LaFour is the real deal. Like, I'm going to say. Like, before is the real deal out there, man. Like, what he's been, like, his offensive play calling has been on point, and the way he's helped Jordan Love develop over the course of the season, because Jordan Love was raw at the start of the year, man. Like, he looked good at the end of last year a little bit when he was coming in in, like, spot situations, cleanup duty, and, you know, it was like, all right, Jordan Love could be the guy, and then all of a sudden he wasn't, and it was like, 
Okay. Uh, this is not good for the Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love was supposed to take that step. He, he went behind Rodgers for multiple years. But at some point, I don't know exactly when it was, but it was like a, a flip of the switch. And Jordan Love was a totally different dude. He was playing with all the confidence. And it just, like I said, it felt like he had such control of the offense. And um, like the only game I really remember them losing down the stretch was the Tommy DeVito game, which they also, even though they didn't play well, they easily could have won that game. Like it was still a close game at the end. But otherwise, the Packers have been playing very well. You know, the Green Bay Packers' is, uh, stout resume in December with Matt LaFour. They lost in December finally, but they still are pretty good at this time of year. And, I mean, you cannot stay in a positive act accolades about Jordan Love, I feel like. Uh, you know, similar to what CJ Stroud has been doing the past couple of weeks, Jordan Love has been on that same level. And it's really exciting to see these young quarterbacks, especially after hearing what Tom Brady said earlier in the year. Oh, yeah, the quarterback uh, level is, uh, the play uh, level, like quarterbacks, is not really that high. And then it's like, oh, yeah, Joe Flacco comes in and is slinging the rock. Maybe Tom's right. But then you get guys like Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud that really make you believe, uh, yeah, this current crop of young quarterbacks can get the job done. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Jordan Love, like I said, all the right throws, all the right decisions, not really, you know, maybe one bad throw in the entire game. There was one third down when, he, when they ran, like, a play-action bootleg, and the main read underneath got taken away. And it looked like Jordan Love might scramble and, like, panic scramble, but, like, he kept Kept his eyes upfield and found Tucker Kraft for a first down. I was like, like that. It, it just feels like that was just way. That was like robotic almost. Like there's no way. Like this kid is that good, but he is that good. Like he is that dude. And the Green Bay Packers, as a seven seed, you know, I I, I still feel like the 49ers can out talent them. But this is just not the team you want to play. Like. As opposed to Dallas, who you knew they had their question marks coming into the game, even though they've been playing so well all season long. like it, You still do wonder if the same Cowboys will show up in the postseason. Will Dan Quinn's defense get exposed once again and get absolutely shredded, since it seems to be a really boom or bust kind of style? Yes. Will Dak Prescott fold under the bright lights? Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but yes. And, like, I really, like, I'm a Giants fan, but, like, I, I am rooting for Dak, man. I want to see Dak do well. And it's been really cool to see Dak play so well this season. But, um, you know, part of this, big part of this is on him at the end of the day. And, you know, C.D. Lamb was so good down the stretch, putting up, you know, double-digit catches over 100 yards consistently. And I don't know what it was that, you know, CD dropped that early third down. It just kind of spelt the story of the day for the team where, you know, that was that was the beginning of the end. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to mess up the easy stuff. And that was really, really a big part of the game was that was just messed up a lot of the easy stuff. And who knows what the offseason is going to look like for Dallas. I mean, I – would not be surprised to see some sort of coaching change, whether it's Dan Quinn leaving as a defensive coordinator or it's big Mike McCarthy being called out. But, um, you know, it might, if it were up to me, it might be Dan Quinn. As good as his defense plays, as good as the numbers they put up, like I said, man, they have a knack for either, you know, locking up and putting up 30 fantasy points on defense or just getting straight up shredded. And uh, Matt LaFour, uh, he was he was the chess master in that game for sure. Uh, so shout out to him as uh, watching Packers punt the ball. The game's still going on right now, but I mean it's so over that you know what else are we can do except talk about what happened here. So I guess we can talk about this game for the rest of the video. Uh, there's gonna be another game tonight with the Rams and Lions. Really looking forward to that one as well. But we are halfway through a wild card weekend and. Uh, you know, not anything crazy going on so far, but I mean, I feel like all the expected winners are kind of not pulling their, I, I mean, I guess the Chiefs were expected to win as Cavante Turpin gets his second kick return of the game. I, will, I bet Dallas wish they had a little bit of this. Cavante Turpin saucing the Packers out here. That's kind of been a bailout for us. We're getting shredded on defense like the real Cowboys. I'm using Dallas in this game, but uh, it don't matter when Cavante Turpin just scores a touchdown right away, I suppose. So, um, yeah. Once again, uh, I am playing subscribers for these uh, videos now, and if you want to get a game in, all you got to do is join the Discord. The Discord will be in the description as well as in the comment section for you to join. You got to hop in there, join the community, say what's up to everybody, and, 
you know, submit your top plays in there, all that good stuff. We are bringing that top 10 plays of the week series back, and if we get enough submissions, which it looks like we are getting some into Discord, then I do want to bring that series back, you know, sometime this week, hopefully, so, you know, I want to do that, want to get the, the franchise back and rolling, so, uh, good stuff coming up, good stuff coming up. As far as this game right now, we kind of just need one defensive stop and we can get out of here scot-free, but Jordan Love is looking like real-life Jordan Love right now. After that early interception to Christian Watson, which looked like a broken play for my opponent, where, like, I kind of bumped Watson, you know, as soon as the ball was snapped and it just threw off the route completely. It was a weird play, but otherwise, this guy has been playing some pretty locked-in offense, and, I mean, we need Kevontae Turpin to return another kick, or else, I don't know, we could do it with Dak, man. We might fold like real-life Dak, except we actually have the lead. Thankfully, let's see if we can hold on to it. That's not going to help. Going outside for Brandon Cooks on first down. That is shut down. Second down, Dak with the step up. Dak taken down by Devontae Wyatt. Trying to step up and run for the first down. Now it's third and long. Prescott, fire middle of the field. And that's incomplete. Through the hands of Tony Pollard, but definitely a risky pass to make. Can't be mad that Pollard didn't come up with that. And, you know, we definitely had a decision to go for it or punt the ball. I decided, you know what? We could go for it, but, you know, let's add some drama to this game. This was not part of me adding drama. That's just a straight-up blown coverage and a touchdown for Luke Musgrave. The lead for the Dallas Cowboys. Or, sorry, the Green Bay Packers. I forgot I'm the one using the Dallas Cowboys here. But surprisingly, my opponent, he doesn't go for two. I don't know why. You would definitely need to go for two there to make it a three-point game. And I'm sure Madden was telling him to go for two, but he had to override that decision to now put his offense on the field, and, or his defense on the field, and down by two. All you got to do is kick a field goal and win the game. But you'll notice, starting in the fourth quarter, this guy's connection really started to mess up. So that's something to keep in mind, that you know if we have a game-winning field goal on the line, a little RPO going to Brandon Cooks, that's not good enough for the first down as... Uh, Jake Ferguson scores another touchdown for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, man, they might be making a comeback. Let's see if our Cowboys can make a comeback. Big third down. We've got it to Pollard. He steps out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Run up the gut, Tony Pollard. That should put us in Brandon Aubrey's field goal range. It'll be a 54-yarder from here, and that is a monumental first down conversion. Let's see if Green Bay, they have to start calling their timeouts now, but... Not yet. They let us chew all that clock. Kenny Clark makes the tackle in the backfield. And this guy, he still doesn't call a timeout. It looks like he's going to let us just kick the field goal here and the, let the game be decided on that. But I don't want the game to be decided on that because he is lagging so much. I can't risk it. So you know what? We're going downfield. Dak wants it all. CD in for six. It's a CD TD when it matters the most. And we've got ourselves a four-point lead. PAT up and good and I mean yeah it was a little bit risky scoring the touchdown there but you know it's a friendly game there's literally nothing on the line just having fun with subscribers out here so eight seconds here you go man have a shot if you could get a Hail Mary more credit to you the kick return is not going to do much Nixon only gets to the 23 yard line you got a timeout if you get a quick hitter but otherwise this would be the game's final play Jordan Love drop back puts in and that's an incompletion but that play somehow only took three seconds so now you got one more crack at it Jordan Love what can you do gotta let it loose and he's hit on the throw took too long incomplete and that's the game at least the cowboys won in madden i suppose leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today let me know in the comment section how you felt about that cowboys packers wildcard matchup dallas fans i'm sorry for you guys i'm sorry but i'm also i'm also a little happy i'm not gonna lie but anyways i'm out of here i'll catch you guys next time thank you as always for watching